Hey everybody, welcome to the Shot Clock Podcast with me, your host Jago. Today I'm sitting down with someone I used to love banging elbows with, somebody who I watched jump over 6'9", Shane O'Callaghan, in the Irish Slam Dunk Championship back in 2006. Former Dungannon, Tralee, UCD, Colester, Vincent, Tolka, all-round good guy, Jermaine Turner, welcome to the podcast. How are you, man? What's up, man? How's it going? Good, brother. Good, yeah. So, look, I've, I've started every podcast the same way. At the start, it was how's COVID treating you and how's lockdown. But now that we're getting back to life, how's things now over in the States? How you, how's life progressing? I mean, it's, it's getting back to normal. Uh, like, uh, I've been back in the gym since uh, January uh, with, my, with our company, The Scoring Factory. So, we've been, we've been up and running uh, doing our Sunday clinics. Uh, every Sunday since January, things are starting to loosen up. Um, right around, I think the end of uh, the first of July, he kind of like all the restrictions were eased over here in Pennsylvania. So, um, like I walk around the store with no mask finally, and it's like, like I forgot what it was like to breathe in public. You know, it's like I'm used to that mask on my yeah. face. So, so we got back to a sense of normalcy in that sense. Um, my girls, um, they just they're starting up. They or just about to finish up their summer league because they didn't have it last year. So it was really exciting just to get to see like all of my daughters play. So back to normal, basically. Lovely. Great to hear. Hopefully we follow you eventually. <laughs> the Irish government are just a little bit slow in doing things. <laughs> hey, look, you know, we'll get there. We will get there. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully. We will get there. So look, most people in Ireland will remember you from your amazing glory days with Colester. Um, I remember you from your Vincent's days. Dave Donnelly spoke very fondly of his season with you when, when he did his episode. Your name, the, the, damn Donnelly's. the, Don, the damn Donnelly's, yeah. Your name uh, pops up quite a bit on the on the podcast for, for uh, your, your high flying and your, your hard nose playing. But we'll go back to the start. Who, what, or why inspired you to pick up a ball for the very first time? Oh, my God. Um, it was – originally, I was a baseball player. Okay. Originally, I loved baseball. Like, I was all about baseball. I couldn't stand basketball because I tried when I was five. I tried to shoot the basket. I was too short. Didn't make it. I was like, this sport sucks. I'm going to go over and hit me some balls. Um, so I didn't play basketball until I was, like, 15, and it was, like, a faithful event. Like, this was, like, a life-changing kind of event. I didn't know it at the time. I went to John M's High School in Queens, and we had a, uh, a bomb scare at the school. It was a nice day in May, like a sunny day in May. I think one of the kids called it in because it's like, screw this, I'm not going to school today. Somebody called in a bomb scare and they canceled school. Like school was canceled. So I was like, we were sitting around with my friends and some of my friends, some of the guys I knew they played basketball, but I didn't really, when they played, I didn't, I didn't go with them. So this day they were like, yo man, let's go to the dunking courts. I said, dunking courts, what's that? He's like, yo, he said, come over here. Cause it was a, there was a park straight up the street from our school and he had eight foot rims, like eight foot rims. I had no idea. And the first game they, they chose sides and it was like, hey, like they did a layup line and said, go try to dunk one. So I dunked one and that feeling that I got, I was like, it was like, you know, that, and I don't want to use drug paraphernalia, but that crackhead taking that first hit, like, <laughs> just like exhilarating. I was like, yo, this is what it feels like? I started playing every day from that moment on. And then I got really, I got really adept at like dunking on people. Like it, it, that's when I really got learned how to play with contact. So I think that was a good thing, like going to those dunking courts. I got to the point where maybe like six weeks later, they were like, listen, man, you gotta go to the 10 foot hoops. Like this is ridiculous now. Cause I'm taking off from beyond the free throw line. I'm freaking going between my legs. I'm doing crazy stuff. They're like, yeah, you gotta get out of here. So they kicked me off and let me play anymore. And so I started playing seriously, like from that moment on, I say like around 15 turning 16. So um, that, it was nobody really inspired me. It was just that moment. It was just that moment, just getting that feeling of dunking a basketball. Like it just like, I was like, this is what it feels like. So I was like, I'm, I'm playing this. It's such so, a great feeling, isn't it? Your first oh God. such a great feeling. I can't, it's, 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 I can't even describe it. Like it's indescribable. Like it's just like, when you get home a real good one, it's like, oh, I can't describe it. I just can't. So over the years, you played with some amazing players. 
like at every every level, every team you played with. But who's been your favorite teammate and why? Okay, um, I gotta have, and I'm breaking a little loophole here because, like I said, like I've been thinking about this for a while because I caught Dave Donnelly's episode and I was like, listen, I gotta get an an import and a freaking Irish player. Like I'm just gonna do this, all right? So, and this is no disrespect to any other player I play with. Like, I'm just picking this one person because, like, I, I, like, when you go, when you battle with somebody and the adversity is there, like, you could lose and you're staring defeat in the face, you really get to see who people are. Um, and I'll never forget this moment. Um, we were in a cup game. We we're playing Balana in the first round of the cup with this team. And um, this guy was guarding the American. He, this American hit a tough turn around three to send the game to overtime. He had about 35 and the coach turned and said, who's going to guard this American? And I was at this stage, the guy was like, he was 2K blinking. He was like on fire. I'm like, I ain't guarding this guy. We're going to step up. And this dude, John team in that Casavine voice, I got him. I said, I said, okay, all right, you got him. Yo, he locked this dude up for that five minute overtime locked him up that right there that he won my heart right there john team by far is like one of my all-time like favorite teammates like i mean he doesn't look pretty like it doesn't look conventional but the guy gets the job done and that i can i can really root for those type of players you know like you overlook them but then all of a sudden you look up and the guy has 25 like how do you get 25 like john team is my all-time favorite irish teammate now my my I gotta pick my American dude like, cause I don't think he get enough love on here, and like we've lost touch in the last few years. But Kenny McFarland by far we were like, we were thick as thieves, you know, we were thick as thieves, and like I, I really consider Kenny like one of my like he's in my inner circle. Like we've been through a lot together. Like you know, he was just my all time favorite teammate because he's just as goofy as I am. You know? <laughs> he's just as goofy as I am, and like when we first met, like we didn't like each other at first. Like, cause he played for Star, he played for uh, Star and I played for Dungannon and like, those are like the rivals. And like, he came in, I guess he tried to be friendly with me. This would be, he let me, he let me know later on, he was trying to be friendly with me. But like I said, like pregame Jermaine is not a person you want to talk to. Like I'm just too intense. So I, I blew him off and I was just being my a jerk. And he said, I don't like this dude. But then when we became teammates in Tralee, uh, we was thick as thieves since then. Kenny's a good guy. I got to play with him once in that All Star game. Actually, it was. Yeah. He's yeah. A, listen, I, I, and I, and I, and I, and it's my fault a little bit because I, I'm just so busy. But I still got to reach out to him and see how he's doing. And hopefully, you get him. I know he tunes in. He does tune in. He does watch this. So, shout now, out. You got, you got to get him on here too. You got to get him on. Hey, look, we we'll get him on. We we'll get him on. So over the years in the league, you came into the league in 2000 with them, Gannon. That was the short and foot and mouth season. Correct. 49 points against Tralee leads you to your job with Tralee. Yep. Change of coaches during the summer leads you to a trip to UCD for a little while. Correct. UCD then on to Tolka. On to Tolka. Tolka yeah. to Vincent's. Tolka, this will happen. So Dave <laughs> Gannon tried to tell the story. And he told you yeah, half the story. Tell the story. Yeah. That's he told you half the story. I'm gonna tell you the, the real story. Hey, you guys, everybody's tuning in. You guys are gonna get the peek behind the curtain a little bit, okay? <laughs> you guys are gonna get the peek behind the curtain. So this will happen. I joined Toka after that UCD season, and we played five games. We played five games, and then we folded. Yes. Now, at the time, I was dating my wife at the time. Or no, sorry, sorry. sorry. For those of you who don't know, Jermaine is married to basketball royalty. So Lisa, Lisa <laughs> Grinnell of the Grinnell clan. Yes, the clan. Unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah, I was dating the enemy at the time. She was <laughs> she was part of the enemy clan. So um, I was dating her. And the moment, like, we found out, because we practiced Tuesdays and Thursdays. So we found out Tuesday night that we were folding. So I called her right away and I was like, like, I don't have a job. Like I'm freaking stuck. And I was like, do you think that Cholester would want to sign either myself or Kenny or both of us and or both? So her brother, Johnny Grinnell, 
the other evil empire <laughs> associate. <laughs> he he got back to her and he said, well, I'll tell, uh, at the time, Mark Ingle was coaching him. And I guess Mark Ingle relayed the message back to Johnny that he would like to take Kenny. Ooh. So I was like, okay. I was like, all right, Kenny, all right, you got yourself a job. I got to find mine. But at the same time, like, like this was not Wednesday. And already, already broke. The news already broke that Toko was folding. So the wolves were lining up for their, for their raw meat. And Kenny was the number one option for everyone. Like, everyone wanted Kenny. They were like, yeah, let's get Kenny, Kenny, Kenny. Vincent's wanted Kenny first. Joey Boylan definitely wanted Kenny. And Kenny, like, this is what I said. I have a lot of love for Kenny because this is the second time he had looked out for me. He got me a job in Ireland. Kenny was like, Jermaine, I don't want to play for Vincent's. That locker room stinks. <laughs> he, says, <laughs> he says, you should go play for them. He's like, nobody's like really, he says, I'm going to end up somewhere. He says, you should go play for him. So this was like, I think this was like, now this was Thursday or leading into Friday because you had to register by noon. So I think Kenny told him Thursday that he wasn't playing for him. So Dave called me right away. Soon as, cause we're, I'm sick. I'm literally sitting right next to Kenny. Then he calls me right away. He's like, Hey, Dave Donnelly here. I'm like, I know what you're up to. Like, I know what you're doing. <laughs> I know Dave, you damn Donnelly. Um, so uh, he asked me to play. I said, "Look, let me let me let me think about it." And then he says, "Well, you got to hurry up because the deadline is Friday at noon to register, so you can play on the weekend." Now I was replacing because they were desperate because they were trying to replace Eric Brown, who broke his thumb in Limerick the week before. Now Eric Brown, if you if you guys don't know the story, ended up going a little crazy, and he blamed his trip to Ireland on that. More on that in a second. <laughs> anyway, um, so he he comes by the house and it was I never forget it was like Friday like about ten o'clock in the morning. Came by the house up in uh, Finglas where we're staying at, and he says, um, "But you made a decision yet?" I said, "Yeah, give me that. I'll sign it and sign the registration, and we can go play on Sunday." So I went literally out, and I had to go to practice that night because Vince was practicing on Friday night. So he says, "Okay, you're gonna be at practice at uh, down in Finglas at like seven. We, we practice 7.30. I said, great. And we get the practice and I needed an, an interpreter because I couldn't understand Joey one bit. Like, I'm like, he's like, oh, God, Jesus Christ, do you all want? I'm like, I turned to Emmett and Emmett had his mouthpiece and he says, yeah, he wants his lineup for three on one. I said, okay, <laughs> great. You're going to be my interpreter. So I end up going to Vincent's like, Fell in love with them. That that first game we had, even though we lost to Star, we gave Star like a lot. And me and Mike, we just went to work. Like it was a great partnership. Like it was, it was like a family atmosphere. Even though they, even though it was second choice, which I don't, I'm not gonna, I don't hold no grudges over. It just felt natural from that moment on. And I, let me see if my wife is watching. <laughs> I honestly feel more connected to to Vincent's, and I'll explain why later. I do feel a little more connected to Vince's. And it's only because we won our first league together. Like, yeah. That's the team I won my first league with. So naturally your first is the one you kind of remember, you know, the most. And especially when we came from nowhere to do it. So to, to cap Dave's Donnelly story, was partially right. Yes. But you guys wanted Kenny first. And don't make don't 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 try to hide that fact, Dave. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I ended up playing with them. So that was Vincent's, uh, Tolkien Vincent's in, what's that, 03, 04. And 04 was the move to Colester. Not yet, because then I was like, at that stage, I kind of like, I went back to Ireland. That was my fourth season in Ireland straight. Yeah. I kind of like, if I was in Europe, I kind of wanted to test the waters to see what's like in other countries. So the next season I went to Switzerland. I went to Switzerland and I ended up playing for a team called Sav Vakala. It's in the Swiss Italian part. Um, we end up winning the B League and we got promoted to the A League. But they 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 didn't want to move up. <laughs> they just brought me in to kind of be competitive. But I was better. I guess I was better than what they bargained for because they were like, I can't believe we won this. They were like, I can't believe we won because like we we, we want to stay in the, we want to stay in the B League because they didn't have money. So I was like, well, look, um, since you guys, I said, if you guys move up to A, I'll come back. But if you guys stay in B, I. I like, there's no challenge for me here. Like, there's no point for me to stay here. So then I went to Finland after that. 
So I went to Switzerland to Finland. And then this will happen. I end up leaving Finland. Uh, just not a good situation for me. Like I, I stayed there from August till I think November, August to November I was there. And um, I end up signing back with Vincent's that season. And that's when we won our first league. So I came from Finland, went straight to Vincent's because I was a little bit homesick. You know, I was missing my wife and my daughter. And I came back, we played, I played there. We were kind of like middling of the table. Like we were like, I'll never forget this. We lost to Balana and that dropped our record to eight and eight. Like we lost to Balana up in Balana, we were eight and eight. And I turned to, uh, I don't know whoever's coming back with me on the bus. And I said, we're going to run the table. And I said, we're going to win this whole thing. Just like, just, I didn't say like, because I knew it. I said it just because I wanted them to give like some motivation that we, there's a lot to be played for. So I said, we're going to win this whole thing. And we ended up winning our last four games. And then we played in the playoffs against Kalani. And I think my signature moment for me anyway, was um, going to, uh, to Cork, <laughs> going to Cork down because uh, it was in Demons. The, the semifinals was down in Demons. It was in UCC and beating the number one team in their own gym. Like that game, like I was so motivated because early in that season, I felt, and I love Pat Price. So Pat, if you're watching this, I, 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 as a coach now, I understand what you were doing. But at the time as a player, I, I took, I took like a, it was a chip on my shoulder, what you did. I felt Joey pulled the plug on the game. Like he pulled all of our starters, like eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. And this is back when quarters were 11 minutes. They would play 11 minute quarters. So he pulled us back. We played the first like two, three minutes. He pulled us all off. Pat Price kept his Americans in the game till the last minute. And we ended up getting drilled by like 35 or 40, something crazy like that. And I remember steaming on the bench. I was steaming and I turned to Kenny. I was like, yo, we're gonna beat these bastards when we see them again. I said, I swear to God, we're going to beat these bastards. And everybody's like, yeah, I can't stand there. You know, the Dublin court thing. So we had that marked on us on our thing because we knew we were in the bracket. We knew that we had a chance to go back and beat them in their place. And everyone circled that game. And I swear, like, I had a really good game. But to me, what won the game was Dave freaking Donnelly. <laughs> Dave Donnelly was out there like, like, and like I said, another guy who's unassuming, he's like, like, unassuming, like, but if you leave him open with that mid range jumper, you've made a mistake. You yeah, didn't, 12 to, 18, 12 to 18, he's yo, good. You, yo, yeah. he was deadly. He was absolutely deadly. And this game, he's, he started the game off with like six straight points. Like, Dave Donnelly started that game off on a hot streak for us. I was like, I'm like, oh, it's like that game. I said, game on. Now, a lot of people don't know at the time. Um, Kenny didn't have really good scoring games in the playoffs, but he was laboring with an Achilles injury. Like his Achilles was really killing him. And like, he gave us what he could. Just him being on the floor was enough of a threat to keep everyone else honest. Yeah. Because everyone respected Kenny's game. But like, I remember Dave Donnelly getting off really hot and like Emmett, you know, Emmett is just that annoying little gnat, like just like up in your face, like yeah. tough. And I playing with him, you appreciate that. Playing against him, you absolutely hate it. And so he was dogging the American guards and he was dogging them and it slowed their game down and we just was off and running. Like we were, we were such in a groove at this stage because we had won our last four um, regular season games. Then won the playoff game because every game was a playoff game to us at that stage. So it was like, we were just in a groove and that just fell right in the line. And once we got that win, like this is how relaxed we were before the championship game for the league final. Like we're in the, I never forget this, we're in a, um, a conference room in a hotel. And I'm sitting there making fun of Joey in front of Joey. Like I'm impersonating <laughs> Joey in front of Joey like two hours before the game. And we're all in there laughing. Everybody's relaxed. And we got to go play a league final. And Limerick was no slouch. But in our minds, we had just beaten the best team in the league. Like we were like, man, this is just like a formality. We won the championship yesterday. But we went out to our credit. We went out because a lot of teams would like would be on a high and just like, you know, take that for granted. But we went out and we just – we we drilled Limerick. We absolutely drilled them. So that was my first championship. And that's why I have like, I'm not saying I don't have affinity for cholesterol, but that's my first one. And like that sticks in my head. Like I still talk like, and I haven't talked about Fenton Riley would send me pictures, pictures every now and then from those moments. And it's like, 
wow, we really did that. So it's a great feeling. Yeah, and that's that's who I'm playing with now. I'm a Vincent's club man now. Oh, so hey, welcome to the family. I better, I better not say that too loud. Yeah, Jesus, keep, keep it down. Keep it down. Yeah, it's I gotta good. keep it low. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so look, over the years, who's been the toughest person you've had to guard? And then who was the one person you hated going up against? Well, I I'd be remiss if I don't say this one. So that year when I was with Toka, uh Jojo Chambers. And Kenny laughed. We laugh about this. Remember JoJo Chambers? <laughs> so Kenny laughs about this because that game, like he called it the JoJo Chambers turnaround jump shot show, <laughs> featuring Jermaine Turner. <laughs> I mean, like I had so much pride. I was like, "Yo, I got him! I got him!" JoJo hit me with that stupid little turnaround. He had, he must have hit about six shots in a row in the fourth quarter on us, and we lost that game. So JoJo was a tough cover. He absolutely was a tough cover. Like he was so like he was so unorthodox. I didn't know what he was gonna do. Like, like because you look at him like I got him, but then he do something crazy. You're like, what did he just do? So JoJo was a tough cover for me. Um, I, I, I obviously Kenny was a tough cover. I'm glad we were teammates. Like because that one year I had to guard him when he was a, with Star. I mean Kenny was like a like he's like a tarantula. Like his arms are so long. Like he take a step and he's already past you, and you'd have to like hack him. Um, yeah, those are, those are two that come to mind. Oh, another one, like, and I, this is no particular order, but BJ McFarlane as well. A lot of people forget about BJ. BJ was, t BJ for those limit teams, uh, he was tough, man. Those, so those are three, three guys that stick in my head. I think JoJo, because of the, because of what he did to me that one time, that he was a tough cover. I remember that. And who 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 did you up the toughest? Like I remember, I had to guard you once. It was just an yeah. absolute joke. I don't know. Well, what Jago, you was out there hacking, Jago. Nice to tell you, man. Stop hey, hacking, well, man. I'll admit it. I was I was <laughs> older than you, slower than you. All I had, all I had was my wily street smarts and that relationship. And, and, I had and, and with was, that was yes, it. it was, and it was so funny because we're talking like we're talking right now during the game. I'm like, come on, Jago, you gotta stop hacking, man. Just, listen, man, I, this is what I got. That's all I got. I'm like, I'll give it to you. I said, I'll give it to you. All right. Um, who I find a, a tough cover, man. Like I said, there was some uh there was some Irish guys who freaking were and don't get me wrong, like the dude is strong as an ox. Remember Matt Kelly for UCD? Yes. Matt Kelly was strong as strong as hell. I'm gonna try to, I'm like, I'm posting him up. This dude must be, he must have had a wedge on me or something like this. This dude was like a rock. I'm like, what the freak? I'm trying to post the dude up. Like, damn, Matt, you're kind of strong out here. I got I to gotta do something else right now. Um, Matt was pretty tough. Uh, and I, I'm not going to lie. And I think Dave Donnelly kind of touched on this as well. The all And he, he plays really good deep. But the all-time best transition defensive person in Irish basketball history has to be Johnny Grinnell. Has to be Johnny Grinnell. Like, I, 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 I dread it. If I was on a three-on-one break, after the first four times he stripped me, stole my pass, or took a charge, I was like, I don't, I don't even want this ball in the morning break. Like, y'all take it. Like, he was great at anticipating passes, taking charges. Like, he was tough, too. And he, he can guard on the ball. And sometimes he switched off in the post, too. And he was, like you said, just like yourself, he's a wily defender. Like, he knew when to reach down and slap at the ball, take a charge. So he's pretty tough. Um, but you know, as a, an American with an ego, you say nobody could guard me, you know? Yeah, there you go. That's the, that's the answer we wanted. <laughs> Everyone says that. And if they, say, if they say, well, no, that's a lie. Every American <laughs> goes, like, nobody could guard me. So that's what it is. But um, I did find like some, some Irish guys playing like pretty tough, like, especially the undersized guys, because like, and this is why I loved Ireland. This is why I kept going back because like, like there's a mentality there. Like there's a tough mentality. Like, yo, I'm not going to give you an inch. I don't care how good you are. Like, I don't care how high you jump. I'm not going to give you an inch. And I love that mentality. Like, that's the mentality I live by. Yeah. And to see it in other people, I was like, man, this is great. I love it. Yeah, it's true. Very, very true. So, look, pregame Jermaine was an asshole. Wouldn't speak, wouldn't smile, wouldn't you get nothing from him. Was that part of your pregame ritual? And if if it was, what other superstitions, if any, did you have? Uh, I had I had plenty of superstitions. <laughs> like, like... Well, I, my wife used to get so mad at me for this. I'm going to tell my biggest superstition. So if I had a really good game, I wore two pair of socks. I wore like low cut, like white socks. And I put some black socks 
low cut over that. Everyone who's been around me, they know the two sock look. So if I had a good game, I would not wash my black socks. I would hang my socks up on like, we had like a little table in our room. I would hang my socks on the table and my wife would come like, why are you putting those socks on the table? I'm like, hey, if you touch those socks, I swear to God, we're going to have a big argument. I swear to God, it'll go down in history as one of the worst arguments ever. Do not touch those socks. I just scored 35 in them. Leave those socks alone. So if I had a really good game, I would not wash my black socks. I would air them out. They would get some plenty of air, but it would still have that form of my foot from the game before. And I'd just slip it right in for the next game. So I was a little bit superstitious about that. And um, as I got older in my career, I started adopting like a little prehab thing. I would take an ice bath the day before a game. I would always take an ice bath before a game. And that kind of helped with some of my aches and pains, like, you know, sore knees and that sort of stuff. So I was really into my uh, my ice bath and to my socks if I ever had a really good game. So those are two things I made sure I did probably all the time. Brilliant. So there you have a part one of the Jermaine Turner episode. Um, in part two, Jermaine picks his five to go to the court. Um, and five for dinner. Interesting five and an interesting way of picking them. Listen, tune in on Thursday to vote on Jermaine's team, um, who he names. It will be Team Turner versus Team Dwyer. Um, and until then, this is Jago saying, I'll see you on the court soon.